What's up ladies and gentlemen, it's Daniel here from the Geek Speak Nation channel. And oh boy, do I have a treat for you today. Uh, I woke up this morning, I didn't know what video I was gonna make. I'm working on this really big video essay project that should be dropping in a couple of days. But I was like, should I work on a Guilty Gear video? Should I work on this video about the DC Comics layoffs that just happened and all that monumental news? But no. Fortnite has us covered today. Uh, Fortnite has hit Apple with a lawsuit because Apple has removed Fortnite from the iOS systems or the Apple store. I don't know what they use. I use Android. I don't care. Regardless, Fortnite has been removed from it because they attempted to change something to do with their V-Bucks uh, in order to make sure that Apple didn't get a 30% cut of their microtransactions. So because of that, they were <gasps> uh, just uh, appalled by this indiscretion. Uh, and because of that, they removed Fortnite from the store. And uh, now in response, Fortnite has issued a lawsuit or in some way, shape or form. But the true icing on the cake of this entire situation is that Fortnite created a trailer, a commercial propaganda, if you will, in response. And oh boy, the levels of irony are just, they're thick, they're dummy thick. They're ogre levels of thick that need to be peeled away. So let's get into this. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the ground breaking masterpiece. 1980 Fortnite. Today, we celebrate the anniversary oh, of the platform unification. Trolls are a little loud. For years, they have given us their songs, their labor, their dreams. In exchange, we have taken our tribute, our profits, our control. This power is ours and ours alone. We shall prevail. <laughs> Epic Games has defied the App Store monopoly. In retaliation, Apple is blocking Fortnite from a billion devices. Join the fight to stop 2020 from becoming 1984. Free Fortnite. What really, what really just grinds my gears about this? I mean, not only is this parody in and of itself absolutely ridiculous, to have to think that this was the appropriate response in order for a lawsuit uh, <laughs> to somehow think that by like adding all these colorful characters and recreating this commercial as a parody that this wipes away or absolves what they're really trying to do and that's they're just trying to get away with making more money off of their players uh regardless uh <laughs> but the thing that really gets me going is this join the fight to stop 2020 from becoming 1984. Now, for those of you youngins out there, uh, 1984 is a novel by George Orwell about this dystopian alternate future where London turns into this fascist totalitarian state that is constantly monitored by the government and forced to, to follow all of these rules and Big Brother reigns over all. And I just think that it is absolutely hypocritical <laughs> that Fortnite would dare make this comparison to Apple, which, you know, to a certain degree is fa fair, you know, the monopoly that Apple has over a lot of industries and the way, you know, it treats its employees and the way it treats uh, the people in the factories who make their devices, which is, dis is a discussion people mostly don't want to have. But <laughs> what really gets me is that Fortnite is owned by Tencent. This is a multi-billion dollar conglomerate all right, that owns so many different companies. Are we not forgetting that these guys were the ones that made sure that Blizzard shut everything down that had to do with Blitzchong and all the protests going on in Hong Kong about trying to fight for their rights over there? <laughs> their democratic rights. It's, it's, wow. It is absolutely amazing that a game owned by Tencent of all companies is going to make the comparison to 1984 is going to make the comparison that, Oh, we need to watch out for greedy corporations that want to rule over everything. A company in China. <laughs> oh 
can't. I can't. But even ignoring all of their absurd censorship that goes on with Tencent and the amount of companies that they own, all of this is about Fortnite getting more money and them wanting to break the rules of the Apple Store. Granted, are the Apple Store's rules broken for the most part? Yes, we've seen that very much so this past week, especially with Apple blocking xCloud and how you know fickle Apple is with making sure their rules apply to the people they want it to apply to in order for to get you know the most beneficial or monetary gain. Yes, that is true. But to treat this as such a straightforward topic and just saying, oh, Apple bad because Fortnite no on there, no. That is absolutely not the case. And this is just clear manipulation, which makes it even funnier because this trailer essentially acts as like propaganda to all of their young fans who are like, hey, you may or may not remember this trailer and you'll go look up the parody of this trailer, but hey, we're comparing, you know, Apple to a bunch of fascists in the novel. So, you know, we're doing the right thing over here. And that's absolutely ridiculous to me. But in all fairness, let's check out this article on IGN by Jonathan Dornbush to make sure that we are properly giving credit where credit is due on both sides of the situation, making sure we fully understand it and fully process all the information. <laughs> but either way, it's silly no matter where you cut it. So here we go. Apple has confirmed that it has removed Fortnite from the iOS app store following the Epic Games alteration of the price of Fortnite V-Bucks and a new direct payment system in response to Apple and Google's exorbitant app store fees. Epic has responded by filing a complaint for injunction relief against Apple. In a statement to The Verge, Apple confirmed that this is a result of, uh, that as of a result of Epic's update to the game, their Fortnite app has been removed from the store. Today, Epic Games took the unfortunate step of violating the App Store guidelines that are applied equally to every developer and designed to keep the store safe for our users. Apple's larger statement reads, as a result, their Fortnite app has been removed from the store. Epic enabled a feature in its app, which is not reviewed or approved by Apple. And they did so with the express intent of violating the App Store guidelines regarding in-app purchases that apply to every developer who sells digital goods or services. Apple goes on to cite Epic's agreement to the App Store rules in the first place, which allowed Fortnite to exist previously on the App Store, noting that the fact that their business interests now lead them to push for a special arrangement does not change the fact that these guidelines create a level playing field for all developers and make the store safe for all users. Wait, hold on, I'm an old man, give me a second. The company explains that it will make every effort to work with Epic to resolve these violations so they can return Fortnite to the App Store. But it remains unclear how long this ban from the store may last at this time. Epic has responded to this move by filing a legal complaint in California stating that Apple has become what it once railed against, the behemoth seeking to control markets, blocking competition, and stifle innovation. Epic Games. <laughs> Epic Games is saying that with their Epic Games store, all of their timed exclusive crap and buying up stuff like Metro Exodus and making all these shady deals and taking things away from people who had previously pre ordered things on Steam. Shenmu 3. Oh my god, the hypocrisy is. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. But let's continue. Rather than tolerate this healthy competition and compete on the merits of its offering, Apple responded by removing Fortnite from sale on the App Store, which means the new users cannot download the app. And users who have already downloaded prior versions of the app from the App Store cannot update it to the latest version, Epic's legal complaint reads. This also means that Fortnite players who downloaded their app from the App Store will not receive updates to Fortnite through the App Store, either automatically or by searching the App Store for the update. Apple's removal of Fortnite is yet another example Example of Apple flexing. Wow. Wow, we really said flexing in an official statement. Flexing its enormous, uh, enormous power in order to impose unreasonable restraints and unlawfully maintain its 100% monopoly, monopoly over the iOS in-app payment processing market. I mean, technically, aren't they supposed to be the 100% since they created iOS? 
Or am I wrong about that? Is Apple not supposed to have the control of that market since they literally created the iOS market? Or am I mistaken? That's genuinely something I'm asking you guys because I want clarification on that. I, I have no feelings on that one way or another. I just genuinely don't understand how that works. So please let me know. I want to be educated on this topic, all right? Apple imposes unreasonable and lawful restraints to completely monopolize both markets. The complaint goes on to read taking issue with the 30% tax both apps and in-app purchases come with and the company believes Apple's behavior has anti-competitive consequences on the industry. I would be interested in seeing what they mean by that because that's... um. It's a bit of an interesting thing right there to say about their anti-competitive consequences. In the video, Apple, <clears throat> three, two, one. In the video, text reads, Epic Games, blah, 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 blah. We already know all that. Along with the hashtag free Fortnite, Epic has elaborated on its free Fortnite campaign, urging fans to recent moves to petition Apple on social media to reinstate Fortnite. Wow, you're gonna weaponize the children that play your game in order to <laughs> like, look, we're trying to pinch every penny out of you kids. We gotta get you on there. You gotta go on your social medias and you gotta, you gotta get your mom's credit card and you say, hey, Apple, you tweet at them. Hey, Apple, we want, we want to use our mom's credit cards, please. Please. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. How Fortnite's removal affects iOS players. Uh, Epic has explained that players who already had Fortnite downloaded on iOS devices will be able to continue playing, but the app cannot be updated further. So once Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 4 begins, which could be potentially as uh, early as August 28th, iOS players will not be able to play Fortnite with the new season's content or battle pass unless the matter is resolved before then. Wah, wah, wah. I wonder if there's going to be a parent who's going to try to sue. We, we, America is a very sue happy place. I wonder if someone's going to be like, well, my kid can't play this game and he bought microtransactions. I want to sue. I want to know if that's a thing. Who knows? And for those asking for refunds uh, for purchases made through the iOS version, uh, Epic's Facts explains that those refunds must be pro requested through Apple, not Epic, due to the nature of in-app purchases. As for why Epic does not want to agree to uh, Apple's terms any longer, the company said Epic believes that you have a right to, the sa to save money thanks to using more efficient new purchase options. Apple's rules add a 30% tax on all of your purchases and they punish game developers like us who offer direct payment options. Yeah, but I mean, it is, I mean, that's still the same issue that they have with xCloud where it's about who the money is going to directly. And essentially, you know, they're acting like, hey, look, we own the club. It costs 30% to get in, baby. So, I don't know. It's kind of a strange situation, but I just definitely do not agree with them trying to weaponize people. And you, and the reason I say they're trying to weaponize the kids that play this game or the, 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 the young, uh, you know, impressionable people who end up playing this game. The reason I say that is because you don't just create a short film or a trailer as what they call it a short film but or this trailer and all that stuff out of the blue this is planned this is calculated hashtag free Fortnite is a campaign it's a campaign it is pre-planned this is all organized to put social pressure on apple so that they are forced to make these changes epic games as much as they want to pretend like they are a victim they are also a bully at the same time look no further than how they've bullied all these other developers and bullied you know people who didn't want to download their game launcher when they were launching their own you know game launcher thing browser what have you whatever that thing was you know what i'm talking about but yeah their epic game launcher nobody wanted that there was even part of that piracy but privacy concerns with some of the things that were going on with it and it's just genuinely an inferior product but people were forced to use it for the games they had already pre-ordered in some cases because the epic games went in there and snuck in and twisted the arms of these developers and handed them some money and said hey there you go so right, don't don't worry about steam or any of this other stuff and you're owned by tencent i don't get it i don't get it so it's it's ridiculous it's ridiculous 
However, let's keep it pushing. Before Apple's announcement, Epic confirmed a change of the cost of V-Bucks, changing the price from 1,000 V-Bucks uh, from $9.99 to $7.99 on consoles, Mac, and PC. Mobile works uh, somewhat uh, differently as players can still buy using Apple or Google accounts at the higher price, but will now offer Epic direct payment when purchasing V-Bucks on mobile devices to save the 20% off. Uh, Epic noted that this was done to pass along the savings to players, citing the exorbitant 30% fee Apple and Google collect uh, on every V-Bucks payment. In the future, Epic is open to altering the deal if Apple and Google will lower their fees on their payments. Can you lower your taxes, please? So essentially they're saying that the, the option they offered was, hey, look, you either pay 10 bucks or whatever, you have the 10 bucks or the 7.99 option, but we will offer you, if you just pay the money directly to us under the table, right? Under the table of the service, under the table of the service, we'll give you 20% off, right? But here's the thing about that 20% off, even though it is technically less money, I think they're making more money, aren't they? Cause it technically be like, they'd be making $7 in profit with the old deal based off of like $10 worth of V bucks. But if you offer it to somebody with a, with a 20% off, but it's directly them paying Fortnite or Epic Games technically, but if they end up paying them directly, then they're making what it's $8 in profit. So technically they're making $1 more, but the point is they're making $1 more and then the rest of that money doesn't have to go to anybody else. It's not lining anybody else's pockets. It's a smart business tactic. However, they're doing this on somebody else's platform with rules that they already agreed to. And I guess if they wanted to renegotiate it, they could say they needed to do that, but nowhere in any of these statements or nowhere in Apple statements, did they say, well, we tried to reach some form of renegotiation, but talks fell through. None of that seems to be happening. To me, it seems like this is just their elaborate campaign of like, okay, we're gonna make these changes. We're gonna do these changes that gets us more profit and make sure Apple doesn't get anything. And then Apple's gonna take us off of the store and then we're gonna launch this trailer and then this whole entire campaign's gonna go. <laughs> it's absolutely very scummy. Uh, regardless, uh, let's keep it pushing. I think the last thing we were at is right here. Epic is not the only gaming company to recently come into public disagreement with Apple and its app store policies. Apple's recent decision to block the Xbox Game Pass app from iOS drew ire from Microsoft, which app uh, which said Apple stands alone as the only general purpose platform to deny consumers from cloud gaming and game subscription services like Xbox Game Pass. And it consistently treats gaming apps differently Differently. Applying more lenient rules to non-gaming apps, even when they include interactive content. And Apple also recently decided to restrict the Facebook gaming apps functionality on iOS with Facebook explaining how months of submissions and repeated rejections by Apple led them to remove instant games entirely from the standalone app. Thank you, Jonathan Dornbush for this wonderful, wonderful summation of everything that has happened. Now that we have all the information, regardless, this does not change the fact that Fortnite is so completely tone deaf in, in all of this with their whole entire ad campaign. This is nothing but a company wants to make more money and this is just hostage negotiation situations for these taxes. This is, this is just, Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace all over again, kids. It's just all about taxes, all right? That's what the old George Lucas was trying to tell us all along. It's all about taxes. My God, my God. It is absolutely insane that, <laughs> that Fortnite would have the balls to, to make such a suggestion that uh, Apple is the one making 2020 be more like 1984. I swear, George Orwell would be turning over in his grave if he knew that these multi-billion dollar companies were out here, you know, trying to flex, if you will, on one another in order to get them to bend to each other's whims. Like I said, is, is Apple completely innocent in this? No, the taxes are probably too high. On top of that, they also have, you know, probably annual fees and all these other hidden fees that we don't even know about when it comes to having an app on the Apple store. 
But <laughs> doing this as a way of negotiations is just absolutely scummy with the most hypocritical ad I have seen in quite some time. Uh, and on top of that, like, I can't get up for that. You were owned by Epic Games and Tencent, which no matter what way you slice it, they're gonna be making the money. Even when they're talking about, ooh, PUBG versus Fortnite, and they're doing all this stuff and all this competition, it doesn't matter. They were both owned by Tencent. Either way, Tencent was racking up the money. But yeah, while we're sitting here, and uh, you know, these, uh, you know, pro, you know, Hong Kong government, pro China communist, companies go ahead and censor all of these people we will sit here and get big mad over fortnite not being on the apple store my god 2020 is it's a year man it's a year it's it's a year i don't know maybe i uh, maybe i'm freaking out too much about this stuff but i just think this situation is just comical it's it's absolutely comical. It's a farce even. What is this what is this life that we live? <laughs> oh the hypocrisy. With that being said, guys, let me know what you think about this in the comment sections down below. Uh, let me know down there what you think about this. I think this is absolutely hilarious and also sad at the same time that we're making such a public hubbub about taxes. Let me know in the comment section down below. And also while you're down there, guys, if you enjoyed this, whatever this was, go ahead and hit that like button. If you're here, subscribe to become a part of the Geek Speak Nation channel. We are really, really close to 2,000 subscribers. And don't forget to try to catch me on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash geekspeakgaming tomorrow. Playing some video games. I think that's it. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm Daniel. Don't forget to get geeky. Tencent. Tencent.